So I've been doing this stretch for probably a good two weeks now, two, three weeks. And it's not even that much of a stretch, it's more of like a release. But you have your scapula and then you have your subscap. And over time due to like improper training or uh, injury, your scapula can get glued to your back. And to release that, you can take, like, I don't even know what this is, this is like a weighted pole. Um, but it has like a nice, like rounded end and you jam it into your armpit and you move it around until you find your subscapula. And I promise it's gonna be really easy to find if uh, your scapula is messed up because it's gonna be super tender. So you kind of just like lean on it for a good like 15, 20 seconds at a time. And you do that for a few sets and you'll start to feel a release. And the release is, uh, you'll be able to feel your lat like open up. So if you're on a lat pull down or anything where you're moving your arm like overhead and you feel like your lat is kind of like stuck, this is a great way to release that. And you know, mine's been, mine's been bugging me for a while now, a few months. And I saw this on, uh, somebody posted it and I tried it once and I'm like, holy shit, like that actually works. So this is something I've been, I've been doing this at least like once a day uh, before my training, even my rest days, I try to just keep it, uh, keep it moving, but I leave shoulders today. So I'm really trying to, really trying to stretch, loosen everything up. And I just want to get after it today and I don't want anything to hold me up. So this is, uh, this is definitely handy today. some lateral raises right now and I'm really trying to control the weight throughout the entire movement on the way up and on the way down I just don't want to be slinging it because um, you know I can't really get a great connection with my shoulder so one of the best ways to actually feel something is just to slow down the movement use the weight that you can actually control and you know if you pick up a lighter weight especially with uh, with lateral raises you just crank them out I promise you you can pick up a five pound weight and eventually it's gonna get real hard so um, just trying to ease into the shoulder workout a little bit but if you guys haven't noticed the shirt yet uh, it's dropping February 22nd but go on um, super dope um, there's a bunch of other stuff dropping besides this but this is probably one of my favorite items it's like if you like oversized t-shirts this is an XL but it's like perfect fit great material and you know I don't know I just really like it so if you're trying to get one like I said February 22nd Kobe on say 15% and uh, yeah the shoulders are feeling it though they're already kind of pumped one movement in it's a great sign so hopefully it's gonna be a good day
when you do this movement, you really just want to drive your elbows upwards and a little bit out to the sides as well. Um, but a huge thing here is your hand placement. And there's like, you know, like the little checkered part of like a bar. Um, I, forget the, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's like the grippy part of it. If you look at, these are just like little like dumbbell straight bars and it has that, that grippy feeling. So pretty much I'll go to the edge of it um, on the inside and a lot of my thumbs on the very, very end of it. So it's kind of like this. And I'll do like a thumb width from the end. I'll just tuck my thumbs under. And it brings you just about, uh, just a little bit outside of shoulder width, maybe even shoulder width, depending on your build. And I found that is the best grip uh, to like kind of mitigate or avoid any in injury with, uh, with the movement. And something that you should really do with this is just start light. If you try to toss like a heavy weight with this, it's, I'm telling you, it's super easy to get injured. So go light, be very, very on top of your hand placement and just be cautious when doing the movement in general. If something doesn't really feel good with it, uh, I just suggest you move on. Or you can even go to a cable and do it. You might have a little more uh, constant tension the entire time. And that's something you really want to maintain on this. So this is uh, it's definitely a staple for me. It hasn't been in the past because I've actually hurt my shoulder doing this. And this isn't a movement that is absolutely necessary. You know, instead of this, you could just do another set of like lateral raises or uh, even like a front raise or something like that. But I find that over time, I really started to like these. So if you can incorporate it while doing it safe, it's a great move. to warm up with something. Um, some sort of like cable movement, dumbbell, something to warm with the triceps before going to movement like this on close grip bench. And this is another movement where you don't want to keep your hands too close on the bar. Even though it's close grip, like you don't want your hands to be touching or even close to it. If you go somewhere just inside a shoulder width, I think that's like a really good range. Um, if you go any, if you go any closer than that, it's gonna be like teeter-tottering the whole time. It's gonna be real sketchy trying to actually move the weight. So uh, warming up, Something light. I'm gonna go up to, I don't know, maybe 225. Nothing crazy, but I do wanna get a nice contraction, nice stretch. And uh, this is one of the best movements to get. Like if you ever see somebody with like huge triceps, like just a bunch of mass, probably doing close grip bench. So uh, this is something I'm starting to incorporate a lot. And uh, I do see little dis or little differences, but uh, the, the main thing that I'm seeing is I can feel my triceps a lot better. Uh, even on the warm-up sets, I know that I'm getting a lot stronger on cable movements, which is good, and it's definitely coming from this, so. God damn. Okay. I swear that right side 
is heavier than the left side, and it's gotta be the rubber plate, like by far. Like I felt that so much more on my right side than my left. I usually do dips for chest, and today I'm doing it for triceps. And just like, I feel like a lot of things are correlated with triceps, just the slower you go, the more you feel it. First set, I had a little bit of a disconnect with my triceps, felt it more in my chest, but I slowed it down. And another cue that I was just thinking about, and I just did, it made a huge difference, was I try to keep my body more straight, at least like vertical, compared to when I'm doing a, like a chest focused dip, I'll kind of lean my body forward a bit and really just be able to get that stretch. But for the triceps, I feel like the best thing to do is be a little bit up and down and uh, just go slow with it. You'll feel it a lot. Body weight is hard right now too. I don't think I got home until about 12 o'clock last night and trained about to like 11, 30, 30 minute drive home. And I had my last meal as soon as I, as soon as I got back, of course, but those late night sessions are just so amazing. Like I haven't had one of those in a minute. And when I was younger, I used to train late like that all the time. Like me and a few of the boys, we would just, we would go to this one gym, Till and Fitness. And if you're if you're familiar with New Jersey at all, probably like the biggest gym there is Attilus. And it was like right down the road from that. We would go there until about like, I don't even know, probably two o'clock in the morning, cracked off this one pre-workout. I don't even remember the name. Um, I think it was like ESP or something. And like we would just be training all night and like just not even like fucking or like we would literally just be lifting weights until two o'clock in the morning. It was such a good feeling, but I think I'm gonna start incorporating some of those late night lifts into my routine just for like mental health or something because bro, it made me so happy doing that. And I'm a true believer when your mental is good, your physical is good too. So I, I think I, I just need to start doing that. And uh, I don't know, bro, I think it's gonna help. But anyways, we have a little meal right here. Like I said, it's not the same day of the training. Uh, it's a day later, but this is usually throughout my day, I'll wake up in the morning and I have uh, a decent amount of carbs then. I'll have about 90 grams of rice, a few pieces of toast, um, typical protein and fat intake, uh, nothing crazy. I'll have like two eggs and uh, a little bit like a shake or some chicken or something like that. Um, and then for my next two meals, I usually, I usually just eat my uh, like meal four and five, um, which is protein and fat and vegetables. So I am trying to cut down a little bit right now, and it's the best to cut down with uh, like either carb cycling or you know just like being in a deficit in general. And uh, with that being said, pre and post workout is when. I get the majority of my carbs. So this meal right here, super basic. Uh, it's just chicken, I think it's macadamia nut oil, which is really good. Or you can get truffle oil. Truffle oil is the best thing ever. It's so fucking good. Um, there's truffle oil, truffle, fucking, uh, truffle red sauce, like marinara, absolutely amazing. And I'll just, obviously I don't put the marinara on here, but the truffle oil uh, just goes on the chicken, makes the chicken taste really good, Min minimal seasoning. And uh, we got olives in here. So I think one of the biggest things to stay on a diet and actually be consistent with it is like choosing foods you like, but having like a wide variety of food. Cause bro, chicken and rice gets so boring after like eating it two or three times a day. So switching it up, I got the kimchi, got the olives, got the truffle oil, the macadamia oil, the chicken, and then my other meals are different. None of my meals look identical. And it's just like, I think this is basic human nature. When you have too much of something, you get sick of it really quick. So, and that's literally fucking anything, uh, not only food. So when you're able to switch it up and keep things interesting and fresh, that's when you actually get uh, like, I don't know, attuned to eating these, these diet foods and it just makes it a lot easier. This past weekend, I went to a wedding and I had some good food. Uh, I only had a steak at, uh, at the wedding reception, but afterwards got 
two double bacon cheeseburgers from Five Guys. And let me tell you, that was the best thing I've had in a minute. Uh, I miss that. That's usually my go-to cheat meal is like a burger and fries or something like that. Super greasy, super disgusting, and it's just, it's so good. But I had two of those, had some fries, and I pretty much cut it at that because I feel like now my stomach is like kind of shrinking ish so i can't eat a lot of food all at once like i can house some food over time like throughout the day but in one sitting i usually get full pretty quick uh which is pretty good when you're dieting um and when you're eating smaller meals throughout the day your, your stomach is going to shrink over time so um anyways i had that meal and i woke up the next day lighter than the day before and i looked a lot better too like i looked drier just like more defined and i think when you have a cheat meal and your body is in a, like a deficit or um, just like some sort of like diet mode. When you have a cheat, I feel like it almost gives your body energy to burn off more food. So sometimes when you like hit like a plateau with your weight or um, you know, the scale really, really isn't moving, the way you look is kind of just like staying the same. If you've honestly, like if you've honestly been tracking your shit and uh, nothing really seems to be working. I think it's really good to throw a little diet break or a cheat meal or something in there just to get everything kind of like, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire. Like that's just gonna light up. So if you're stuck with like a plateau and you're being honest with yourself about that, uh, go get yourself, I'm prescribing you a burger and fries. So go get that, five guys, leave a hefty tip and uh, it'll get you right. But something that I, kind of like at the wedding it was so normalized that like everybody was drinking i didn't drink or anything but it made me start thinking that you know when you're at least when i was younger like when i was about like 17 i kind of switched from like that party mindset 17 18 something like that i don't even know maybe i was 19 honestly i can tell you but switching from a party mindset to like a more dialed in focused like workout fitness lifestyle there's gonna be a lot of people around you who you know like it's like yo like you're too good for us you can't come out to drink anymore or just like something like that and it's really discouraging because obviously you want to keep your friends but I feel like that's the biggest part of growing is going through these growing pains of either growing out of people or you know some people will like if they're your true friend they'll stick along with you through uh, like your, your journey your ride whatever you want to call it and they'll be by your side but like it's very normal for you to grow grow out of people um, that's just life it's gonna happen your goals are gonna change your visions aren't gonna line up completely and you know if you're in that spot right now like I'm telling you there will be a little sense of regret or a huge sense of regret when you're older and you're looking back at that like when you're 85 you're gonna be like shit I really wish that I didn't care about you know Johnny's opinion about me and I stuck with fitness and you know I chase after my actual goals rather than going out and partying and doing stupid shit because you know partying and doing stupid shit just gets you in trouble and you know it's good I, I truly think like it's good to have a little bit of balance in your life where you know you're not straight edge if you want to be straight edge it's amazing but it's not for me I can't do that so uh, at least my old self um, but I think it's like, you know, it's normal to grow out of people and just don't listen to the shit around you that is going to prevent you from reaching what you want to accomplish. You know, anyways, I have this meal right here. I got to finish it. But thank you guys for watching the videos. I really appreciate it. The support all around is just amazing. And remember, if you're having a bad day, it's just a bad day, not a bad life. And overall, just thank you for tuning in and I will catch you in the next one.